My question is for Dr. Bedouin. Um, I'd like to quote a few verses from the Quran. This is a Yusuf Ali translation and ask your opinion here. Um, Surah 10, Ayah 64. No change can there be in the words of God. This is the supreme felicity. Surah 15, Ayah 9. We have without doubt sent down the message and we will assuredly guard it from corruption. Surah 12, Ayah 111. A confirmation of what went before it, speaking about the Quran. And Surah 10, Ayah 94. If thou art in doubt as to what we have revealed unto thee, then ask those who have been reading the book from before thee if these are true and of course you accept them as true why is there no warning in the Quran of the corruption in the Bible which I take it you believe in and why do you not accept the Bible then completely as the word of God and one quick remark you made the the comment that um, the word of God had been decided by the on the authority of councils of different churches and I would like to know on what authority you accept the Quran other than the word of one man, Muhammad. Let me first answer your last point quickly because that's an easier one. The Quran was not decided by one man because the Quran is quite different from the words of Prophet Muhammad when he was not specifically receiving the revelation through Angel Gabriel dictating to him word for word. And that's quite a different situation from the Council of Nicaea, for example, or other councils that sat down with various manuscripts, each are claiming to be the word of God, so they decide that this is apocryphal and this is authentic. In the case of the Qur'an, there have been no Qur'ans that say that this is to be accepted and this is to be rejected, this surah is to be added or this surah is to be deleted. So it is just the original revelation as the original revelation given to previous prophets. So this is, there is no similarity at all with the church council there. Your uh, various questions about the mention of the Qur'an about the Bible. First of all, you mentioned the verses that deals with the non-changing of the word of God. I think I answered that partly in the presentation, that in two verses in the Quran, when it speaks about word of God, kalimat, it does not necessarily mean words in writing. Uh, for example, in surah number 18, it says, ما نفدت كلمات الله, which means the signs of power and existence of Allah, or the laws of Allah in creation. Secondly, when it says the word of God, even if you interpret it to mean scripture, even by the stretch of imagination, if you take all of them, which is not true, to refer to preservation of the word of God or his teaching, the answer is yes. The essential teaching of God of monotheism has been preserved, and if there have been some changes before the Quran, the final revelation, preserved the word of God from any change or corruption. The various questions that you raised about the Quran confirming previous scriptures, I know that some missionary literature make a great mistake, and I have that notes on the, uh, the uh, book by Dr. Shirush, which I read before, that uh, alleged that uh, the Quran gives evidence that you should accept the Bible. Nowhere in the Quran, nowhere in the Quran does it say accept the Bible. Nowhere in the Quran does it say accept the Old Testament. And nowhere in the Quran does it say accept the New Testament. What the Quran speaks about specifically is a Torah, Torah, and Injil. But even Muslim understanding of Torah is not the first five books, the Pentateuch, as defined by Jews and Christians, but what Moses received on Mount Sinai. In fact, Christian scholars themselves were able to find out that part of that Torah was not written by Moses and usually most likely after him. In chapter 34 of the book of Deuteronomy, it speaks about the death and burial of Moses. How could have Moses written that, and could have, how could that have been the revelation given on Mount Sinai? It uses in the past tense. So obviously, that, that, that's not the kind of Torah that the Quran refers to. And when the Quran speaks about the Injil, it, it never used it in the plural. Never. It didn't say Gospels or the four Gospels. In fact, in the Quran, it says Jesus taught the Injil. And Jesus himself in the Bible says that go and teach the Injil. And this was long time before any of the four Gospels were written. Did Jesus go about uh, carrying the books of John, Mark, and Luke and teach them? They were not in existence. So what the Quran refers to is the revelation given to Allah through Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. The other question that you raised about if you're in doubt, ask those who read the book. This is a very simple thing to respond to. This is a rhetorical question that is directed to people who deny Prophet Muhammad ﷺ and the originality of the revelation given to him. And this is not unusual. Dr. Shirush was quoting to us, Ya ayyuha nabiyu idha talaqtum an nisa in one of his, the verses that he mistakenly quoted. Talaqtum is a plural, whereas it addresses the Prophet. It is well known among anyone with the slightest knowledge of tafsir, 
or Quranic exegesis that the style of the Quran many times addresses the Prophet, but it is meant to address people. That if you are in doubt, with ask the people of the book. Secondly, it's just like saying, if that brother could fly, he could go to Kansas City in two minutes. It does not mean necessarily that this could happen. It is an assumption that even if, if there is any doubt, ask, and the answer came quite clearly as narrated in many references that the Prophet said, لا أشك ولا أسأل. I have no doubt and I'm not going to ask anyone. And Ibn Abbas reported the same thing. And the fact of the matter that the Prophet actually never asked any source other than the revelation for information to be a source of Islam. Whenever he asked them, he asked them by way of establishing the evidence against them. And uh, there is an incident that many people just keep quoting without putting things in context. That there was an incident where some Jews committed adultery and they came to Prophet Muhammad to give a ruling because these people were noble. And they said, if he rules in our favor, we'll accept his ruling. If he doesn't, okay, we'll not accept. So the Prophet asked them, don't you find in your Torah that this and such and such is the punishment for adultery? He did not ask for information. He asked to establish evidence against them. I'd like to just follow up on that then. If we are to read the Torah and the Injil, where are those perfect books and where have they disappeared and why are we instructed to read something that does not exist? The Quran answers that question in no uncertain term in chapter 5 and you refer to verses 45 through 52 that says we reveal to you O Muhammad this book that is the Quran confirming what remained that means interpretive what remained intact of the book before it a guardian over it the word muhaymin comes from ulu, from being high above. That means some criterion to be used to assess what remained intact and what was changed. In the Quran itself, the very name of the Quran is given Al-Furqan. And Surah number 25 calls the Quran, actually, or 67, calls the Quran Al-Furqan. And the word Furqan in Arabic means the criterion between right and wrong, truth and falsehood. So for the Muslim, the original revelation given through Prophet Jesus, Moses, or any other prophet for that matter, can only be tested against the last authoritative and meticulously preserved revelation, the Qur'an. Whatever agrees with it, the Muslim accepts. What reason would the Muslim have to reject the Shema? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And when Jesus was asked what is the most important commandment, and he spoke basically the same thing. He did not to believe in me as the Savior who shed my blood. No, he spoke also about the love of God and obedience to God. He confirmed this purity of monotheism. And when the Quran says, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٍ Say, Allah, He's Allah, the one and unique, the one who is independent of all needs. He begets not, nor was He begotten, and there is none like unto Him. What reason would the Muslim have to say that this is false, I will not accept it? That might be part of the 75% that Dr. Shirush is talking about. But whenever there is difference, there is a belief, with all due respect, that human hand played its role, and I got you a confession from Paul himself that not everything he said was revelation. He said that himself. 